ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Chicago Board of Election regular board meeting of September 8, 2020. If at any time during this call you require assistance, please press star zero for the operator. Also note that this call is being recorded. And I would like to turn the conference over to Maricel Hernandez, Chair of the Chicago Board of Election. Please go ahead, Madam Chair. Good morning, everyone. We will call to order the regular board meeting of the Board of Election Commissioners for the City of Chicago. My name is Maricel Hernandez. I'm the chair. And with me is William Cressy, Commissioner Cressy. I am here. And Commissioner Commissioner Cressy is present. Commissioner Jonathan Swain. Swain. I can't hear you. Okay. Commissioner Swain is present. Thank you. Um, the next item of, on the agenda is the consideration of the agenda. Are there any proposed changes? If not, we'll proceed to the approval of the minutes of the regular board meeting of April 14, 2020. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Commissioner Christie, I mean, Commissioner Swain uh, makes the motion. Is there a second? Commissioner Cressy seconds. Commissioner Cressy seconds. It's been properly moved and seconded. All those in favor, say aye. Commissioner Swain votes aye. Commissioner Cressy votes aye. Motion passes. Next item on the agenda is the executive director's report, Mr. Goff. Thank you, Madam Chair and board members. Uh, today is going to be, uh, this week is going to be a very critical week for us at the Chicago Board of Elections. Some of the items that we're working on is, one, to finalize early voting. As you know, we've had some issues with some of the sites with early voting. Hopefully, we, we're trying to finalize it this week. I need to have them ready by the 14th, so we'll be working as hard as possible to get those uh, finalized. That's one. The other items are uh, we have a meeting, uh, city and county has a meeting with uh, uh, the Department of Cor- Cook County, Department of Corrections, hopefully finalize uh, voting at the uh, 26th in California this week, hopefully to finalize that. Um, we have meetings, ongoing meetings with uh, OEMC, Dominion, with our cartridge companies, and with the printers. We also are working uh, very hard on some other items uh, that we will be uh, reviewing our processing of mail, uh, vote by mail ballots. Uh, I wanted to make this a brief uh, report. I have things, uh, items that will be submitted to the board members in writing, Uh, but that's all I have for right now. I need to leave by 10.30 because I have another uh, appointment that I just cannot cancel. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Mr. Gough. Any questions? If not, uh, we'll proceed with the Assistant Executive Director's report. Mr. Holliday. Good morning, Madam Chair, fellow commissioners. As of today, the registration department has 4,500 registrations in house to process. Uh, September the Fourth at 5 p.m. was the last day for the commitment to assign judges. Uh, today we start assigning judges over the counter with our judge department. Presently, there's 1,976 active and assigned election judges. Uh, of that, 1,363 are party judges, 196 college, 236 high school, and 181 language. Uh, there are 6,400 pending judges' application have been approved through waiting to be assigned. 1,355 judges that have applied and are awaiting approval. Uh, currently, we have 1,627 active and assigned election coordinator. Uh, there's 807 new election coordinators that the applications have been approved. Um, our vote by mail. 351,502 applications for vote by mail, and our drop boxes are en route. You should receive them sometime this week or the beginning of next week. And that ends my report. Thank 
you very much. Uh, are there any other questions for Mr. Holliday? Yeah, Mr. Holliday, uh, I, I have uh, 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 two questions, and, and I, I'll just say this, too, uh, before I begin. You know, on behalf of uh, me and all the board members, we do wish you condolences on the, on the loss of your father. Um, we understand how that can truly be, and so we appreciate you, and we appreciate your family. I know he was a, a good man and, and produced good fruit, so we want to issue, uh, offer those. Um, Thank you. And secondly, secondly, um, uh, question to you about judges, youth judges. I know that MIFA has, has said that because of COVID that they can't participate in the same way they have before. But if we, if there are other groups that are looking to provide um, young people to be as judges, what are the, the, the parameters around that? Do they need to be 18, or, or what's the what's the parameters around um, um, groups that might want to provide some high schoolers to be judges? I believe I believe it's the same. Yes, yeah. yeah, I believe our, our our standard and our and our regular qualifications that we have now for student judges will be the same, Commissioner. Okay, Can Commissioner Swain, this is that is for me again. All right, Adam, go ahead. This is Adam Lasker, if you'd like me to step in. Um, go ahead. Under the, legislation, under the legislation for this November election, judges have to be 16 at the time of service. They no longer have to obtain a letter of permission from their school or from their principal. So they basically can just, uh, any such student or any such teenager can apply directly through the Board of Elections and from there forward, as Mr. Holliday said, that would just follow our standard procedures, uh, and that's essentially as easy as it, as it is for this November. And, and also, Great. I believe it's listed on our, web, on our website, Commissioner Swain, also. Great. Could, 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 you, could Adam, you or Charles do me a favor, kind of in, in quick order, could you put together an email for me that details that information about, you know, what's needed, what they would need to do, because I do have some some some, uh, some groups that, uh, parent groups that have young people that are looking to get in, say, involved in this election, so I do want to forward that to them. I've been I have a couple of inquiries already about that, so I'd appreciate that. Okay, yeah, we'd be happy to provide that, Commissioner. We'll get together great, on that. Great, great, great. Great, great, great. My, my second question is about vote by mail. So, uh, Charles, from, from looking at vote by mail, I know in the previous uh, a couple meetings ago, we talked about how the, the vote by mail application submission um, as a percentage of registered, of registered voters uh, had been uh, been overwhelming in the in, in some of the north side wards, but have underperforming in the south and west side wards. Have we noticed any change in that, or is that still the case? It, it is still the case, Commissioner, and um, I can get you a um, a breakdown of that again. I uh, that to him uh, Sunday. Okay, I, I believe last stated that he sent it, the breakdown to you on Sunday. Uh, so, so we're, we're still we're, we're still noticing the same trends with that. Yes, we are. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is Commissioner Cressy. Could I be sent a copy of that as well? Yes, yeah, sure will, Commissioner. We'll send you one as well. All right, it's all printed to all three of us. Yeah, we'll be copied. We'll do. That's all I have. Okay. 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 Uh, what, what, uh, Commissioner Cressy would like uh, uh, Commissioner uh, uh, rather uh, uh, Charles. Um, first of all, again, our condolences. Uh, and um, but with regards to the numbers for the judges of election, how you know how many more do we need, and how bad are we in filling our slots? Uh, yeah. We we have. Uh, Space for 14,000 uh, poll workers or judges of election. Uh, just to let you know that looking at the list was coming in, we've always had uh, trouble recruiting judges for uh, the door side, but those are coming in heavier than we thought. So I think uh, once we get the numbers in and we start advertising for judges over the counter, I think you'll see that increase. There are a lot more uh, people that want to serve to work as judges now. I've been getting phone calls on that. So the numbers are, will, as you will see, will rise. And as soon as we do a PR press, a PR piece to get out the word that we need poll workers, I think you'll see that increase. Excellent. Thank you. That's all. 
Go ahead. This will start today, Commissioner, because the judges' department, they started assigning judges over the counter, and they have quite a few applications to start with. Very good. Thank you much. Okay. Any other questions? If not, we'll proceed with uh, strategic planning, and we have Eric Sedler from Kivet. Mr. Sedler. <coughs> Yes, hi, good morning. Um, let, let me just take a few minutes and, and give a summary of the, the work that we have underway, and, and then obviously I, I know there'll be questions and, and comments. Um, so the goals that we have really fall into to three related categories. Number one, we want to promote uh, all of the various activities that the board is engaged in in order to maximize voter turnout. Number two, we uh, want to use, and we will be using communication to support all of the specific tactical uh, activities that the board is engaged in uh, that are required to have a, um, a full and complete election process. And then thirdly, we are going to take steps to make sure that uh, turnout and participation is equitable um, across the city. And so within those uh, specific focus areas, we are really focused on um, the priorities of the board and how communication can uh, support that. So uh, th we're focused on the following areas. Number one is um, using communication to advocate for uh, poll worker recruitment. Um, number two, using communication to raise awareness about uh, the various deadlines for voter registration. Number three, the uh, vote by mail process, uh, including you know drop-offs drop -offs beginning uh, September 24th and, and the various deadlines uh, for vote by mail. Uh, fourth, the early voting process. Uh, fifth, the new ballot drop-off centers, uh, and then in an ongoing way, uh, making sure that we are responding to educating the media and the public uh, about ongoing facts and information that are, are being communicated um, to the public. Uh, beyond that, we are going to be developing a set of collateral materials to support each of these different activities. So those will be materials such as toolkits, fact sheets, social media copy, um, graphically designed material, uh, posters, and, and those kind of activities. And uh, we'll be developing those collateral materials to support uh, each of the activities that I talked about, poll worker recruitment, early voting, um, vote by mail, um, and again, the various uh, deadlines that are um, that the public needs to know about in order to fully participate. The, the last point, um, the second to last point, is uh, working with stakeholders and uh, community-based organizations. So we'll be working um, collaboratively with the Community Services Division to uh, make sure that community-based organizations have uh, materials and information that they can share with their constituents. And, um, you know, we anticipate working with them uh, throughout the entire uh, process uh, up to the election. And then uh, the last part will be the Earn Media, the Media Relations Campaign. We are um, developing an editorial calendar that will have uh, plans for proactive media relations aligned with each of the key dates uh, uh, on the points that we talked about previously. And we will be working to generate media and awareness uh, on each of these key issues through the course of the election. So, you know, within that, there, there's lots of tactical detail, but um, those are really the highlights of the work that we're focused on. Thank you. Um, are there any questions? Uh, this is Commissioner yes. Swain. I, I have a couple of questions. Uh, go, go ahead, Bill. Go, go ahead, Bert. No, the, this is Commissioner.
Commissioner Cressy, I have some questions. But uh, Jonathan, you cut in first, so you go ahead. Okay, okay, thanks, Bill. Um, so Eric, uh, thank you for that. Uh, a couple of quick things, I just wanted to make sure that you may have said it because you packed in a lot. I just want to make sure I'm not missing it. Um, uh, with respect to social media and social media assets, that's all part of your, your plan as well, to communicate to those that learn all their information via social? That's correct. We'll be creating all the social media property. We'll be posting the social media uh, on the various communication channels. We'll be monitoring um, all of the social media for uh, effectiveness and, and refining and, and updating through, uh, through the entire campaign. Great. Have, have you given any thought? I know I don't know if the board has done this previously, but you know, as I've been watching a lot more uh, 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 YouTube as I cut the cord, um, I've been noticing a lot of uh, ads on YouTube that have been that may be may or may not be as effective for that. So just something to consider. I'm not sure the board has done that previously, but in terms of any kind of paid advertisement um, uh, in that through that channel, that might be something we want to consider. Um, my my second thought is a, is a tactical thought. Uh, you know, a, a few um, a few elections ago, we worked to um, talk about how, how best to communicate some areas, particularly in the African American community. So historically, the, the 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 we talk about community organizations, but um, sending things out to churches has been a has historically been a great vehicle for us to communicate things um, with respect to voting. I, I would I would I would say that we we want to make sure that we're very intentional about that as well that as a as a distribution arm, um, especially as uh, uh, churches are using a lot more online kind of kind of material, that may be a great vehicle to ask them to incorporate that into their broadcast and things like that that they're doing in terms of getting information out to their their their, their congregants. But in addition to that, um, we, I always had a running joke that you know everybody may not go to church, but everyone goes to get their hair done uh, or their haircut. So we also send things to barbershops and beauty salons. To uh, you know, posters they can post, and and I saw that to be somewhat effective, at least through my own travels of getting my hair cut um, back from pre-COVID. Um, so that might be another tactic we want to make sure that you you you, you uh, take a look at. And I think Jim should have a lot of, of listings of where those places are. But that seemed to be rather effective, especially in touching um, folks in the African American community. Thank you for those ideas, and I will make sure that we build them into our communication plan. Thank, thank you. I'm not still. Go ahead. Okay. Commissioner Cressy? Yes, uh, thank you. Um, a couple of items. Uh, I noticed you, you talked about uh, uh, work with regards to uh, recruiting poll uh, workers. Um, I think from our last report, it sounds like we're, we should be, we're doing pretty good on that. So uh, hopefully, we, you know, don't 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 spend too much more time on that than you need to. If if uh, if we're getting as many poll, uh, and so many people are interested in working on the polls, that so let's not concentrate too much on that. Maybe, but um, two items that I think we should concentrate is, of course, vote by mail. Um, we could have one third. Right, we already have probably one third of potential voters who are requesting vote by mail ballots. Uh, there'll probably be a lot more, um, and as has been seen at other jurisdictions around the country during the primaries, a lot of ballots have been rejected uh, for simple reasons, um, not mostly for not signing the outer envelope. Uh, so I think we really need a big push on education on vote by mail. First off, I've had people say to me, you know, when, when are you mailing me my ballot? Uh, there, I think there is this misunderstanding that you have to first request the ballot, that we're not one of those, you know, places that are mailing ballots out to everyone, so we need to get that word out. Um, we, uh, we need to get the idea that, you know, uh, get those ballots back to us quickly so we have time to process them since the processing is going to take time. Um, again, sign your your ballot, and if you're having somebody bring the ballot in or mail it for you, you have to sign the certificate on the back. I mean, also the uh, the ability to track the ballot online. Uh, so, um, uh, so if you're afraid that if you mailed your ballot and it, you're afraid it hasn't been received, you don't do uh, what was suggested by someone last week and go down to the polling place on election day 
just to see if your ballot's received, um, which would clog up our lines on election day. So I think it's a steep learning curve since you know we're getting you know like almost orders of magnitude more uh, voters voting by mail than ever before, and they they need education on these things. Um, also, I think we should have um, something. Uh, or messaging with regards to uh, building up confidence in our election system. There are uh, folks on all sides of the political debate that are making the system look bad. I think we need to show that we have the systems and the controls in place so that uh, there will be integrity uh, with regards to our voting. And finally, in what you're talking about, are, are, are you planning on producing both radio and television PSAs uh, that the stations can broadcast and uh, get out there? So just uh, what are your thoughts on those different things? Well, first of all, I, I agree with uh, all of the points that you made. Uh, number one, we certainly are going to prioritize our time based on where the need is the greatest and we'll take direction from uh, for Lance and, and obviously ultimately from the board in terms of prioritizing our time. We totally agree that vote by mail, um, you know, is a, is a core part of what we need to focus on because of all of the education issues that you already talked about. And so we see that as being a, um, a central part of the work that we would be doing in terms of to creating materials that are easy for people to understand, uh, but also lay out exactly the sequential steps that have to be done in order to uh, to vote. So th those will be in the materials that we'll be developing. Those will be in the, um, the briefings that we'll be doing for reporters and, and working to make sure that that information is getting out publicly. Uh, so again, that's really the, the primary point that I would make. In terms of the specific tactics like PSAs and things like that, we're going to work with, uh, you know, work with Lance and, and the team uh, it's really a matter of, you know, the uh, budget consideration and uh, what we can get out of the various uh, news stations. I think our sense is that, uh, given the importance of this issue, that there will be receptivity by uh, local media outlets to, to run PSAs, uh, as well as to facilitate media interviews and, and that sort of activity. So our, our plan right now is that uh, we'll be producing those kind of materials. Excellent. Um, I mean, take your time. We only have 55 days and 13 hours. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. Well, thank you, Commissioner Cressy and Commissioner Swain. Those are all great questions. And we will certainly uh, follow up with uh, Kivit and uh, make sure that our goals are aligned and, you know, get a uh, exactly as Commissioner Cressy was stating, we only have 55 days. We got to make use of each of those days, each of those hours, each of those minutes um, in this uh, most important election. Um, um, is there a part of strategic planning, uh, Mr. Allen? Um, anything going on? Yes, thank you. <laughs> and, uh, We've been working over the last uh, week in particular to try to coordinate various activities with Kivet, uh, ranging from uh, web content to uh, the video that goes out with the vote by mail, as well as bring them up to speed on all kinds of uh, related issues that we're confronting, and at the same time begin fielding uh, the media inquiries and coordination. Uh, we're making the updates to the videos on how to vote by mail. This is the video that goes out with the email uh, we used in the primary with great success, and it covers the key items like making sure you sign the envelope, and now we're editing it to add three different elements, the drop boxes, uh, what if I change my mind and I want to vote in person, and then thirdly, as a result of an item that surfaced last week that Commissioner Cressy referenced um, and that uh, the chairwoman uh, wanted us to add as well. Um, can I attempt to vote twice? Obviously the answer is no. Um, we'll be posting to the website today 
in coordination with the county, the candidate list with the punch numbers, uh, uh, been attending meetings with uh, Lance and OEMC. Uh, we're signing off on various forms and signage and uh, materials needed for the polling places. Uh, in addition to developing new signage uh, per the Illinois Department of Public Health and the Centers for Disease Control to encourage uh, A, fast face masks and B, main mandate social distance. Uh, we're working on the Canvas mailing follow-up. This is for the returned mail. We have approximately 80,000 pieces and the this is the forwardable component. So the first one is a return service requested. Those all went out uh, in July and uh, before early, uh, August uh, 4th. And this is the follow-up for the pieces that returned undeliverable that came back to us. So that these are forwardable pieces now that go to the person's new address so that they're encouraged to update their address or inform us that they're, they just temporarily moved. Uh, we're working also on the pre-election mailing for mid-October. This is the standard pre-election mailing that informs uh, voters of their precinct polling place uh, to early voting slash drop box sites and reminds people about uh, their options for either returning their ballot return envelope uh, or uh, applying uh, if they're going to apply that late. Uh, there's ongoing preparation with the vote by mail vendor. We're finalized, we finalized the instructions that go out with the ballots. Now we're, as Lance mentioned, uh, waiting on the critical need with the Dropbox list insert. Um, and lastly, we're going to be looking to add web pages on both the topic of security and a special uh, shortcut web page to the Dropboxes so that people can find those by region of the city as opposed to, uh, to ward, which they may or may not be aware of, but we'll, we can separate these out uh, by you know, direction area of the city so that people can look at north, south, uh, southwest, uh, west, and even southeast, Hegwish, what have you. Uh, and with that, take any questions. Okay. Um, commissioners, do you have any questions? Okay, yeah, thank you. Um, we will then proceed to new business, and the first well, I, and I, only I, I, I do have one question. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. okay. No one question. Jim, Jim, can you just very briefly, um, with regard to the vote by mail and the emails that go out, um, so someone sends an application. I've seen posts on social. People are very happy that we've gotten their applications. They'll get a notice when they send an email when their ballot is sent out, correct? Yes. And then they'll get a notice when their ballot is returned and or and, and processed. Hey, can you talk a little bit about that piece of it? Yes. Uh, there are several components that we reformed at the last election. So the first one, the first email is in response to an application and it reassures the voter that we've processed their application and then it gives them rough information about what to expect next. In this case, that the mailings will begin starting September 24th. Then the next email that the voter receives is when the mailing of the ballot occurs. And uh, that, that email will include two key components a link to the U.S. Postal Service Intelligent Mail Barcode Tracking System, so they're going to be able to track the, the packet that they receive with their ballot to their home, or in the case of college students, to their campus address. Um, and then uh, that link will also allow them to track their envelope if they use the mail and track it back to the election board. Uh, that same email also will have the how to vote by mail video just we have in the past. The difference being is that we have to add the components with drop boxes and what if I change my mind. Um, then we also send a, an email uh, that indicates that we've received the ballot. And finally, we send out an email that indicates 
that we've processed, accepted, and we are counting the ballot. So that it's much more transactional. It's not drop it in a mailbox and operate on faith. Right. And so so let, I want to I want to dive in right then. So so can you talk a little little bit about just to dive in a little bit more? What you said so for the people that are are getting the ballot and will have be able to track the barcode. But for those mm-hmm. that are dropping in the Dropbox, how long after the Dropbox? Uh, well, the drop box are picked up every day. How long after they're picked up will they get an email saying we received it? That's going to be a function of how soon the board staff is able to scan in all of the barcodes on those ballot return envelopes so that we may update and send out emails based on that. So uh, I don't have an answer for you. Uh, I'll try to get that. And in one of the upcoming meetings with uh, the vote by mail staff to determine okay. what the plans are, but obviously as quickly as possible. I would add one more thing. We are also we we experimented with this in the primary and we had success with it. We are going to be sending uh, nudge emails out, and that is if we mailed out a ballot ten days ago and we haven't seen anything yet from the voter. We're going to send them an email saying, hey, uh, we mailed this out on such and such date. Uh, it's time to vote it and, you know, return your ballot return envelope and sign it and seal it uh, as, as soon as possible. So that also helps, uh, you know, remind voters that uh, or, or to check their mail in case they, they might have it on the dining room table and, and didn't notice that it arrived. Okay, so 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 two things I, I I'd say. One, um, as as the conversation is happening about protocols around when the ballot comes in, especially because we're having drop offs uh, at political places, I think we need to set a protocol around how long how long we we have uh, as a guideline to 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 process that ballot. I can imagine someone dropping off their 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 uh, their uh, their uh, ballot in a box, and then let's say it took two days to get it scanned, someone asked you, okay, what happened with my ballot? We need to make, I think it's important for us to set a protocol around that so that we can level set expectations for people when they drop their ballots in ballot boxes, if, if that makes sense. It does. It does. Okay. Second, secondly, um, and this is a larger conversation that I, we, I'll have with, you know, appropriate parties after this. But but I, I I am I am a I'm a wee bit concerned about um, about equity when it comes to um, the nudge email. And the reason I'm concerned about that is because if a certain swath of the city has participated in a vote by mail for whatever reason at a higher level than other parts of the city, if the if the board is sending nudge emails saying hey make sure you return your ballot. There could be a concern or argument to be raised that we are um, we are inequitably uh, encouraging people to vote just by the mere fact of our process system. Not saying intentionally, but very unintentionally. So I think that's a conversation that we need we need to have at some level, not necessarily here, but with other parties and discuss at a later moment to make sure that in the midst of how vote by mail is being adopted, at least at this point, differently across the city, that we make sure that our efforts are equitable across the city relative to encouraging general participation, if that makes sense. It does. Uh, fortunately, we have been receiving a large number of email addresses on, well, we, we receive them automatically with the online application, but we've also been receiving them handwritten in on the paper uh, the, from the, the forms that we mailed out to the voters. Uh, they're filling that in. And uh, this is a practice that we picked up from other jurisdictions with more experience with vote by mail. Hey, Jim, Jim, um, not, not, not to but to, I, I, get, I get all I get all that. I okay. get we're getting differently. But if, if you're looking and saying that certain wards in the city are returning vote by mail at this point of, near, of nearly 45, 50 percent, and other wards in the city are returning the, at 8 percent, and we're sending nudge emails, we got to be careful about what about about, about any. Um, uh, unintended consequences of that relative to our our communication about about 
uh, encouraging people to vote. I just want to make sure we're equitable across the board. Understood. Are there any further questions? Yeah, yes, I, 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 uh, I have one. Um, I, I'd like, uh, this is uh, Commissioner Cressy, I'd also like to be in on, on that because we are, after all, targeting certain wards for participating and, you know, it's, it's going all over the place on there. Uh, but um, with regards to uh, the, uh, uh, this is a mechanical thing, the, the labels, the, uh, the barcode labels, uh, that uh, are placed on the uh, outer envelope that gets sent back. What identifying information uh, do we place on that? I've been getting inquiries. Apparently in some states uh, it cont uh, that uh, barcode l label contains both the voter's name and also their party affiliation. Do we have that on our uh, labels, uh, Chip? No we, no, we do not. That's a good, good question. The only items in the barcode that we have are the uh, voter registration number. There's no party affiliation that we even have on any um, registration. So some states you register with an a party affiliation, like New York and Pennsylvania. Illinois, you're free to pick the primary ballot that you want and change or stay the same from election to election. So we don't have party affiliation records to put in there in the first place, but we definitely just have the focus on the on the voter registration number. There's also no personal identifying information such as uh, the uh, date of birth or anything like that. Uh, is, is the name printed on the label? The name and the voter registration are both printed on the label and that's a safeguard so that if the voter only signs and dates the certification, it's still a valid and a uh, valid return envelope. Okay, very uh, okay. That's that's good. And um, uh, there was a second question which I can't remember right now. But oh, I know. But what percentage of our uh, voters do we have email addresses for? Any idea? Well, it's it's dramatically increased because of the online vote by mail applications as well as the mail in uh, vote by mail applications. So we started out this election. Uh, you know, we started out sending out emails to approximately 350,000. I would have to check with the IT department, but I guarantee it's much higher now that we've had, yeah. uh, you know, 200,000 plus apply online, which required a, uh, an email address, and then another uh, 130,000 plus apply by mail. Uh, which was an option, but uh, I think we're going to come out of this election with a much greater email uh, list than we, we've ever had before. Now, if we don't have the email address or if, if the, the voter hasn't provided us uh, with an email address, they can still track at least the receipt of their ballot uh, at the board? Yes, at the, at the website. ChicagoElections.gov under the vote by mail section, we already have uh, up the vote by mail status so that the voter uh, merely enters their name and address and they can check the status of whether it's been mailed to them, whether the board's received it uh, back, uh, and then whether or not it's been counted. Okay, I think that's a good message to get out there. Thank you, Jim. I say, Jim, I, I have one other question um, with respect to that as a follow-up to Commissioner Cressy. Can we get a report that gives us a percentage, uh, as a percentage of registered voters, um, how many email addresses we have per ward, per as a percentage of registered voters, so get a percentage like we're doing with vote by mail, just getting a sense as to do we have email addresses equitably across the city? Commissioner, this is Lance. I'll run that report. Thank you, Lance. And, and just as background, it typically tracks more by age than any other demographic because uh, the advent of the online voter registration system six years ago in 2014, that's where we really started to pick up uh, email addresses for voters. And the voters who are most likely to have used that system are people who have moved or moved into the city um, in the last six years. And those tend to have been 
of younger voters, and by younger I mean 45 and younger. So that's a different way to cut to, to, to slice the apple relative to, to being heavy, equitable across the city. So if we could just get, if there's a way to get that report last by, by age, that would be one of age groups that we typically group voters, and also if we could get that list by ward, that would be very helpful to me. We will work on that. Thanks, okay, sir. now I have a question. How <laughs> many telephone numbers do we have? Um, on, from the we, application. That, that I don't know. Uh, we we did encourage people to provide on their vote by mail application uh, an email and or phone number so that we have more means to contact mm -hmm. them. As far as voter registration records, we have a lot of phone numbers that are uh, not only outdated based on how long ago the person registered, but if they registered long ago enough, there's not even an area code back, back from when we everybody was 312. Right. So uh, phone numbers are, are an even dicier uh, uh, list because you know people change cell carriers and sometimes they also change their phone number depending on their, their system or, or their job situation. So um, uh, that, that's an even trickier one. And, and Madam Chair, just to let you know, we never give out phone numbers yeah, or email absolutely. or email we never divulge. Exactly, exactly. And that's been a question that uh, voters have asked um, based on the robocalls, and uh, we do not divulge any of that information. That is solely for our our use. Okay. Any other questions? Yes, just one last thing, uh, Lance. Uh, that report that uh, Jonathan, a uh, reports that Jonathan requested. Uh, if you could also shoot me a copy and, and and probably to the chair as well. It'll be given out to all board members and to key staff. Thank you much. Thank, thank you. Okay. So uh, we will proceed now. If we there are no further questions with old business. Infrastructure projects, changes in election administration, voting equipment. Um, I think uh, anything new on that? We're right in the middle of it, Madam Chair. Okay. Electronic poll books, anything uh, new to update us on? Uh, okay. Nothing to update at the time, Madam Chair. Okay. Thank you. Legislation, Mr. Lasker. The uh, General Assembly is not scheduled to be back in session until November 17th after our next election. So it's still nothing to do. Oh, well. Well, okay. Um, then if there is nothing further to report at, at this time, then we will go into new business. Um, and uh, our one item under new business is selection and appointment of the next executive director of the Board of Election Commissioners, effective December 1st of 2020. And I'd like to proceed uh, this uh, with uh, a little uh, background. Uh, many, many months ago, after learning of uh, Mr. Goff's intended retirement, we decided to embark on an exhaustive search for a new executive director. We began this process by reaching out across the United States to find someone with at least the same depth of knowledge and skill as Mr. Goff, with the ability to juggle the dozens and dozens of issues and obstacles that the executive director confronts, sometimes in rapid fire when putting together an election. And with the ability to deal with the constituency groups who provide us with constructive ideas and who are our partners and seek the same goals this board has, a safe, secure, and transparent election. And so, given all these things in mind, we searched nationwide for candidates who could fulfill our needs and wants. We received applications from far and wide and across all of the United States. Uh, we reviewed their qualifications, and from that pool, we interviewed the best candidates. After conducting interviews, the answer was pretty clear. Each of us separately 
selected Charles Holiday as the next executive director. Charles' depth of experience at the board is obvious. He's worked for the board since 1981, starting out doing clerical assignments. He then worked in the binder department, reorganizing that department and digitizing the documents there. He next worked in the registration department for 12 years, and then from 2010 to 2017, he became the manager of the registration division, the largest department of the board. Since November 2017, Charles has been the assistant executive director to Mr. Gonk, providing him and this board with invaluable assistance in every aspect of the board's electoral process. My personal dealings with Charles throughout my 13 years at the board have always been positive and constructive. Charles is extremely knowledgeable. He is so respectful of others. He listens to diverse opinions before making final decisions. And to top it off, he is just the nicest person anyone can get to know. Uh, and now I'd like to know if any of the uh, other commissioners would like to say anything. Yes, this is Commissioner Kirk. <laughs> I, I, got, I, I got in first this time, uh, Jonathan. Uh, yes, this is Commissioner Cressy. Charles, I am just so thrilled uh, uh, of this appointment, which we will be voting on shortly. Uh, you're a very good man. Um, I am, you know, somewhat, of course, tempered by the fact that your, your father passed so recently. But uh, I think you and I both know that he is looking down and grinning right now and uh, very happy for you. So well deserved. Um, you, you've been a, a pleasure to work with these last few years, and I look forward uh, to you to working with you uh, for many years into the future. And um, I, I think if you wanted to take the job, you know, before the election, uh, Mr. Goff would probably go along with that. But I don't think we're going to allow it. Uh, so uh, 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 congratulations, Charles, and uh, best wishes. And uh, uh, let's see, Jonathan, you're next. Uh, th thanks, Bill. Uh, Charles, I'll echo all the statements that have been made um, thus far. Uh, it's been a pleasure to work with you. Uh, but, you know, one, one thing that I, when I think about the role that we as the board play in the context of elections is that, elections is that uh, to use the baseball analogy, we're umpires. And our job is to call the ball to strikes and to call them the outs and safe and to call them fairly. But in the midst of being an umpire at this level, it also means that you have to have respect of all the players on the field. To extend the analogy, I, I appreciate the fact how, of how you have garnered the respect across the board and across the aisle of all the folks around Chicago as I go around the city and talk to people that are involved in this electoral process. Um, for those that have been uh, either elected or those that have not been elected, they all say the same thing, which is Charles is a fair guy. He's an honest and straightforward guy and makes sure that things are done appropriately and fair to everyone. And his door has always been open. So I, I appreciate that. If it's a t testament to who you are and a testament to um, the kind of leadership that you'll be continuing to provide uh, by this board. And, and let me also echo, uh, which is also important, Charles, I, I appreciate um, as, as being someone that's come up through the ranks, you understand where everyone who sits in the board and who works with the board tirelessly, more tirelessly than I think many people recognize, especially around times like this, of all the contributions and being able to, get to, to garner that respect and garner the gratefulness um, and convey gratefulness to this board and for all those in leadership, to all those that work on behalf of carrying forth a, a free and fair election. So um, I, I, my congratulations to you, and we look forward to working with you on December 1st, um, uh, all to December 1st, but also on December 1st as the leader of the, the next leader of the Chicago Board of Elections. Okay, if there's nothing further at this time, is there a motion to approve the appointment of Mr. Charles Holliday as the Board of Elections new Executive Director as of December 1st, 2020? This is Commissioner Cressy, and I enthusiastically move the motion. Is there a second? And with great honor, I do second. The motion has been properly moved and seconded. All those in favor, state aye. Commissioner Cressy votes aye. And Commissioner Swain votes aye. 
The motion passes, and uh, Mr. Holliday is officially, or will be our new, officially will be our new executive director as of December 1st, 2020. Congratulations, Mr. Holliday. And uh, if you'd like to say anything, uh, we would welcome it. Just, just a few words, Madam Chair. more excited and humbled to hear the board has confidence in my abilities to lead this organization into its next chapter. And I would like to accept this amazing offer at this time. And again, I cannot thank you, I cannot thank the board, Lance, enough for this opportunity and I look forward to a highly productive and positive working relationship with the board and staff for as long as my services are required. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I just want to bring out one thing. This uh, appointment of Mr. Holliday, who is so qualified for this position, just shows how valuable someone who rises through the ranks can be to an organization. Um, and Mr. Holliday, you, as, as I stated earlier, you started out as a clerk at the Board of Elections and you made your way up slowly but surely and you had all this experience, uh, you've had all this experience under your belt. And I think that is extremely, extremely valuable. Um, thank you. Thank you. Um, if, uh, if, okay, and now we will proceed with a legal report, Mr. Lasker. Well, that's quite an exciting act to have to follow. I guess my, my legal report <laughs> will certainly begin by giving my congratulations to Charles Holliday. His relationship with the law has been fabulous from everything I've known about him. He's one of the first people I got to know as a board long before I started working here because I knew that if I, if I wanted the, the right answer, he was, the, he was the one to talk to, and he never resists operating uh, the way things are supposed to be operated, both under the law and in uh, compassion for all the employees of the board. Charles, it's going to be wonderful working with you as we move forward, and congratulations. I'm very excited. Um, as far as other pending legal matters, I just would like the board to know that the uh, motions to dismiss were filed in the Cook County Republican Party versus Jamie Pritzker case last week Friday. Uh, uh, responses and replies will be filed leading up until the 11th. Uh, the judge has promised a ruling long before September 24th, and that's important because September 24th is the day we're supposed to start sending out vote-by-mail ballots to those who have applied, and if the Cook County Republican Party is successful with this litigation, it would draw great questions as to the validity then of applications that were received uh, under the new uh, November legislation and our ability to send out those ballots. It would be quite disruptive to our system, so um, we're hoping, obviously, that the, that the court lets things continue moving as they go, uh, and I will keep you apprised of that. Uh, we did also last week move into an official ballot in production phase, so we are no longer accepting candidate withdrawals except for anything related to judicial reviews of electoral board matters, although we don't ha I believe don't have any of those in our jurisdiction. Um, and then I've been working with uh, Joan Agnew, of course, uh, at, at uh, meeting with various departments to nail down the policies for the new, the new steps and procedures that we're working on for November, things like the ballot drop-off boxes, the voting with voters with disabilities, having electronic access to a ballot to uh, turn mail into us. And so those projects all continue, and that's uh, my report for today. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? If not, uh, we'll, we'll proceed to the next items. Uh, we have no financial report. Um, I believe we do have public comment. Um, yes, Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. You will first hear from Don Olson. Please go ahead. Okay. Mr. Olson, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Uh, and, and I have we, we, are, we, are, we do have the time limit, just so that you're aware of five minutes. Okay. And, 
and Commissioner Christie is keeping track, okay? Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, well, first of all, congratulations to Charles Holliday. Of course, I've known Charles for a number of years as well and uh, have no complaints in any of my dealings with him. And he's a very friendly and professional person, so congratulations, Charles. Um, I have two questions today. The first one is um, concerning the publication of registered write-in candidates. Um, I'm wondering what the current procedures are going to be for that. I know in the past, um, if my recollection serves me correctly, uh, write-in candidates were posted, the list of write-in candidates were posted in the um, polling places. And I believe also there was a list of write-in candidates that was put on the board's website. So I'm wondering if those policies are going to continue and if there are any other uh, ways that the list of write-in candidates is going to be publicized. Mm -hmm. That's my first question. And my second question is I'm wondering if you have set up any of the procedures uh, surrounding the verification of mail-in ballot signatures uh, and what, what the room is going to look like. I don't know where your planning is on that. Um, I think I previously recommended that there be some, that uh, in order to maintain social distancing and so that everyone can see the signatures, everyone in the room, including the poll watchers, that the signatures be projected on a screen or on a wall. Uh, so that we can see if they actually match. Um, I'm wondering if you've made any progress in exactly what the setup is going to be for the room. Um, and also, um, the scheduling of the verification of the signatures. I know in the past that's been problematic when I've tried to um, be there for that event because I never knew day to day whether it was going to happen or not. Um, Eventually, I worked out some things with the board one year where I was, I received phone calls to tell me whether the event would happen, but I'm wondering if we can do that in a more organized way. I know the Agilis okay. machines, uh, the Agilis machines, I believe, sort out the ballots according to ward or district, and in the future, especially at municipal elections, we're going to want those ballots sorted out by ward so that poll watchers can go and see the signature verification for the ward they're interested in, but so that they don't have to sit through all the other wards while they're there. So if you can give me any uh, ideas about where you are in the process of uh, oh, okay. deciding Thank you. what the procedures are. Mr. Olson, let, in, the, in the interest of time, let me, let me see if uh, can uh, hey, Can anyone... I just say one more thing? Um, oh, yeah, if... you're just taking up. Okay, uh, I would be very willing to be part of this process if you'd like to have an actual poll watcher there when these decisions are being made. Um, okay, this is you. an issue I've been talking to you about for the last five years, so it's something near and dear to my heart. Okay. okay. Thank, thank you. Um, is there anybody uh, um, uh, of our board people who can uh, respond to any or uh, all of them? Uh, if I may, if I may yeah. tackle the right list question. Um, technically, the, the only legal requirement is for us to provide the write-in list to the judges of election for use at the end of the night to determine whether a write-in vote is valid or not. Uh, we do not post them in the polling place because that would constitute electioneering. However, as a courtesy, we have posted that on the web, and we will be posting that on the website again uh, near the, the listing of the, can the candidates who qualify for the ballot. Okay, thank you, Mr. Allen. Um, and do we have any uh, responses to the uh, set of procedures for verification of, uh, to verify uh, mail-in ballot procedures? Um, have, do we have that yet? Yeah, thank you. Madam Chair, this is Lance Goss. Just to let you know, we're still working on setting okay. up the space on the ninth floor, so we're working on that now. We haven't finished. And uh, as uh, Adam made a comment, Joan and Adam were working on written procedures, so we're working on that. Okay. And the scheduling of uh, ver verification of signatures, I think that was the, um, I think by ward, 
In fact, the, the last question. Uh, and time. Okay, thank you. Uh, um, we will get back to you on, on, on that, Mr. Olson. Um, Sylvie? Is that Madam Chair, we yes. will next hear from Claire Tobin. Please go ahead. Okay, Ms. Ms. Tobin, good, good morning. Oh, good morning, Commissioners. Uh, thank you very much for uh, listening to us. And I also wanted to offer congratulations to uh, Charles on his recent appointment. We are really uh, happy to have such good uh, continuity in the whole process, and we look forward to working with him. And also condolences on the, on the death of his father. Um, it's a very sad time. Um, so the two um, items that I wanted to draw your attention to, uh, and I know uh, Jim Allen very nicely updated me this, uh, on those uh, points. One was the update to um, someone's signature. I think this is going to be, uh, you know, very um, important when it comes to verification of signatures. And he, uh, I noticed on the website that it, uh, it's on your register to vote or change address or change name, which is in a, a box on the right-hand side of the, um, of the website. And I would suggest adding update signature to that uh, heading so that people have, a, have a, um, you know, a clear way of finding it because otherwise it's, it's hard to find. Um, the other item that I uh, have feel may be uh, an issue is people get their vote by mail ballot, they uh, mislay it, you know, they don't uh, return it on time or whatever, and then they go and say that they will vote in person. And so I know that if they have re received the mail-in ballot and they don't return it, that they can only vote uh, a provisional ballot um, if they don't bring it in with them. But I think that really, really needs to be very um, highlighted because people are not aware of that. Um, so that's uh, one point. And the other good thing that I know Jim has also said that he's working on uh, is having clear uh, instructions on the, the mail-in ballot to filling in the oval, not a check mark, not a uh, an X, because uh, you know we've known from the past that those uh, marks do not get tabulated. Um, that that was those were major items that I feel uh, may need some attention, and I thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, Ms. Tobin. Thank you, uh, Sylvie. Thank you, Madam Chair. Next, we will hear from Ashley Moss. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, can you hear me all right? Yes, I can. Okay. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, I understand that you're having uh, your meeting with Cook County Jail this week in regards to um, voting at Cook County. Um, I just have a couple questions, um, and if you have the answers for these right now, that'd be fantastic. Um, what division in the jail will the voting be taking place? And I understand that PPE will be provided uh, to poll workers and election judges um, in the wards across uh, Cook County. And what procedures will be in place to guard uh, against health risks uh, at the Cook County Jail? Those are my questions. Okay, can someone answer that? Madam Chair, this is Adam. I Go ahead, Mr. Logar. Go ahead, Adam. Well, we are meeting with the jail, and we are still trying to nail down exactly where in the facilities uh, the, the locations will be. The jail has presented its uh, suggestions, and we're just trying to verify that we've got the staffing and equipment for it. It will be in multiple locations for multiple days. In, 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 a, in a manner that the, the jail has provided to us with their belief that they can uh, transport the, the detainees from wherever they may be residing to down to, to the voting area. Um, and so that still a work in progress, as you pointed out, that we're going to be trying to finalize that this week or very soon. Um, as far as PPE, uh, I do believe the jail has said that they will be providing masks and sanitizer and gloves and so forth. We have our own supplies to provide, but, but I, I do believe the jail said that they'll generally provide them for the poll workers. 
uh, and we're working with them to, to nail all that down. Anything the jail is unable to provide, we will also provide uh, similar to any other early voting site or precinct, and that, of course, includes face masks, uh, hand sanitizers, sprays, plastic shields, plexiglass shields, and so forth. Mr. Groff, did you have anything to add? No, uh, we will be, because they will not be able to leave uh, the uh, facility, we'll supply uh, lunches and water for our poll workers also. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ma. Thank you. Madam Chair, we will hear next from Tamara Young. Please go ahead, okay? Ms. Young, good morning. Please unmute your Hello. line, Ms. Young. Ms. Young, Hello. If your phone is muted, Ms. Young, could you please unmute? Hello, thank you. Um, I have no questions at this time or comments. I'm just listening. I'm glad to be in um, and just uh, being aware of everything that's going on. Okay, thank you, and you're welcome to be at every meeting. Um, at this time, Madam Chair, we have no one else. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Sylvie. Um, the next item is executive session. Mr. Lasker, do we have our need to go into executive session today? No, we do not, Madam Chair. Thank you. No. Okay. Thank you. Um, if not, then uh, we is there a motion to adjourn to our next regularly scheduled meeting on September 22nd? 2020. So move, Commissioner Swain. Is there a second? Sec second by Commissioner Cressy. And how is properly moved and seconded? All those in favor, state aye. Commissioner Swain votes aye. Commissioner Cressy votes aye. The ayes have it, and we are now adjourned. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the board meeting of September 8, 2020 has adjourned. We thank you for participating and ask that you please disconnect your lines. Enjoy the rest of your day. Mm -hmm.